Well, they're, I mean, they're people from all over. The majority of them are from East Belfast, and then there's other people from Greater East Belfast, and then it was wider, you know, wider field as well because with it so much publicity. They come for a number of reasons, and um, and it, it's just such a diversity. In fact, one of the things I'm going to do, I'm hoping to this summer, is to film some of them and get their stories because I find their stories fascinating. Some of them come because they've travelled, and well, you know yourself once you get out of Northern Ireland. You marry a man, you can't go to Northern Ireland. Well, I find no matter how orange they've been in Northern Ireland, when they get out of Northern Ireland, they've come a wee bit more green, you know, and they start to maybe get the opportunity to explore their Irishness. Mm -hmm. And I especially get a lot of letters from people, you know, who'll say that, you know, they only became Irish outside. Uh, also, what's interesting, I have a few of them that were. Um, Irish regiment soldiers. So in the Irish Re in the, the Royal Irish Regiment, of course, you celebrate St Patrick's Day. You wear your shamrock, and for some of them, that was the first opportunity that's ever happened, and there was a pride in being Irish. Um, some of them, they very much see it as that Ulster identity, so that's important to them. Some of them, the Red Hand Commando, because their motto is in Irish, they they're, they're sort of interested in that, you know. I thought I was in an alternate universe when you said that you're actually teaching about how commandos. I thought I have something happened here because you know that's astonishing. Mm -hmm. They're quite. They're not all interested, I have to say. But <laughs> <laughs> some of them are very uninterested, you know. But um, you know, I, in fact. I was. I went to do a talk for them one night. Um, I, it was a guy organised it, and he brought me up. Now again, they were never. They weren't told what I was there for. The first slide went up. I could see. I could see the look of horror on their faces, you know. But I just kept going, and they didn't laugh at any of the jokes or anything, you know, sort of thing. And when I got to the end of the question and answer, there was only two of them spoke, and they were quite negative. Now, in a very polite way, I have to say, and I, you know, I have to give them their due. When I left, they, you know, they carried my case out. They shook my hand. These were the ones that were negative you know to make it plain and uh, <laughs> following me home you know no seriously but I had given out um, a wee sheet you know just to, to sort of get a bit of feedback and I thought you know my because I'm going to skew up all my results here because it's all going to be so negative and the first two were and after that they were all well I'm glad to see we're taking something back and but you know I, I wouldn't mind doing this and you know and it was actually quite interesting and then some of them came to learn so there you go well, thanks very much for sharing my <laughs> Can you know I did? <laughs>
And I had it down in this GAA club in a very, very Republican area and um, down in the country. And there's a bit where the British Army it's playing music and all, you know, and I kind of looked around and I could see sort of faces were a wee bit sort of hung going like this going down. And when it was over, I said to them, that just is the first time the British Army were ever in here, you know, <laughs> and it just they fell about, so it was very good. So, no, you know, it's, it's been very positive and it's been a lovely way. We have made, you know, so many friends and, you know, just people who are, they want to support us and want to support our learners. And at the very beginning, our learners, some of them were very nervous about going over into West Belfast and going to classes. And one of the things we did when we started up at first, you know, there were some people who would have liked us to create a wee sort of Protestant utopia. You know, we were the sort of reaction against the, the Catholic classes. We are going to be this wee Protestant class. And I never wanted that. That was not what I was interested in. You know, I wanted us to take our place within the Irish language community. That was what was important to me. And we certainly have. And, and you know, to be fair, I know some people within the Irish language community thought we were a bit of a joke, but we've proved ourselves. and We've more than proved ourselves over the past um, five or six years. So, you know, now our learners <coughs> just go, you know, at first we used to have to physically take them over and bring them on a bus and all and say, no, it'll be fine, honestly, nobody's going to shoot you or all, you'll be all right, you know. Now they just go over and when they go over the classes in West Belfast, they'll say, you should come to our classes in East Belfast. And people say, oh, I'd be a bit worried about going over there. Come on, wise up. And then they'll come and say to me, Linda, this is Seamus, met him over in the falls the other week. He's going to come to our classes, you know. So it's a lovely way of just people very naturally making real friendships and real relationships. I'm not sure, and I did. I had um, Diane Dodds, she's a, an MEP from the DUP. I had her down with me, and she's the only DUP one that's ever visited me. I've invited Arlene Foster, but she hasn't responded as yet. Um, what I think we do do very effectively, and I know, you know, to be honest, Sinn Fein have used us in that way, um, but I'm, I'm, I don't have an issue about that, is you know, the, the sort of game is that the DUP will say, well, everybody in the Irish language, it's all about Sinn Féin and it's all about, you know, and we say, well, actually, no, it's not. We're not Sinn Féin, you know. So at the minute, sadly, it's a bit of a, a political football between the two big hitters, which is Sinn Féin and the DUP. And I don't think that's helpful to the language in any way, um, the, the stance that either party's taken, but um, that's where we're sort of stuck with. Um, I hope we're helping. We're doing our best to help. We're probably doing more. We're more effective with ordinary people on the ground who sadly just see the, you know, the big sort of sensationalist headlines and listen to the Stephen Nolan show on the radio. That's the radio show in the mornings where they get on and fight the peace out. You know, hopefully we're you know, helping to bring a bit of sense to the argument and actually say, no, like, you know, think a wee bit more about this. It's not going to cost 100 billion, trillion, zillion, and all the hospitals are not going to close if we have a, an Irish Language Act. Uh, what are we looking for? What are the, is the Irish language community looking for? Well, there's a, there's a wish list at the minute which isn't going to be satisfied and we, we understand that. But one of the things that Gordon and I are very interested in is the um, post of an Irish language commissioner because we would hope then that that would take things out of the party political scene. And, you know, language is obviously political, but we don't want it to be party political. Um, also, more evidence of the language. We're not going to be able to get, um, you know, signage everywhere at the minute. It's lovely. We've been taking a lot of the photographs of the signage on the island. It's lovely to see the signage, but signage is a big problem in Northern Ireland. There's a lot of sensitivity because it's, I suppose, it's like a flag issue. If you go into loyalist areas, you see lots of flags. You go into Catholic areas, you see bilingual signage. So signage sort of demarcates an area, and I don't want to see that. So what I would like to see is signage in neutral areas. Signage maybe aimed more at tourism. Um, we were on the beach this morning, and you have lovely signs, and it explains what the words mean and tells you a little bit of the history about the area. I think maybe something like that to start off with that would be aimed at tourists might sort of help. We have a long way to go. You know, it's going to take a long time, but, um, you know, we're getting there. I'd like to see more investment in Irish medium education, especially in unionist areas. So I want to create a demand. And we uh, particularly want to see more cross-community engagement with the language because, unfortunately, at the minute, we're the only show in town. And, um, you know, we're trying to 
sort of work across Northern Ireland, which with two, two full-time members of staff and one part-time member of staff is very, very difficult. And we have become the sort of Protestant face of the Irish language. There's a lot of interest. You know, we're having now to train other people to do talks and things because there's so many people want to hear the message and want to start up their own wee classes and things. But um, we don't have the capacity to be able to support people in that. So hopefully, if if and when an Irish Language Act, and we believe it's coming. It may not be called an act, it might be called a strategy or, you know, but it'll, it'll come in some form, so. Well, I think the first thing is, it's the similarities to the Irish. I know the first time you ever came to my office and you wrote it down, and it, it, to me it looks so strange. It looks really, really weird to me. And then you said to me, just read it. And then I thought, oh my goodness. And, uh, and the wee lesson then that we had with Adrian, you know, it's so like smilem, a smilem, you know, it's just, it's so much of it is similar. And somebody was speaking, we went into the wee class now, when it's two really good speakers, no one's like, oh, it's just lost. But when people are a bit slower, there's a lot of it I can actually make out, you know, and my Irish isn't fantastic, you know, so it's, it's lovely. It, we're looking around the place names and it's just fascinating Gordon and I, it's, it's trying to decipher it first of all to get beyond the spell and then realise oh that's, that's what it is and oh yeah no, we can understand that but I think what's wonderful is the visibility of it here on the island you know and it's, I, it, I see a great pride in people being Manx you know going around and seeing the Manx flag and you know your own history and your own culture and of course that's so important and you know, that, that is beautiful. And what I suppose what saddens me is I remember the first time when Bran and I went over to Scotland and went to the Gaelic speaking parts of Scotland and, you know, people were playing traditional music and they were speaking the language and they had a pride in being Scottish. And I knew that in Northern Ireland, you know, we can't do that because, you know, if in Northern Ireland and, you know, you'll understand where I'm coming from, if you, um, you know, enjoy your Irishness, well then you're obviously a Raven Republican if you're a Catholic. And if you do it as a Protestant, well you're obviously a Lundy, you know, you're a traitor. You know, there's no space for that. Where here, you can be Manx and you can enjoy that without, you know, you're not betraying anything. You're not, you know, nobody's going to criticise you or attack you for it. Where it doesn't work like that in Northern Ireland, sadly. We have lost so much of, you know, who we are, I suppose. And people, people don't want to call themselves Irish. They don't want to call themselves even sort of Northern Irish, some of them. They just want to be British within the unionist community. And yet in Scotland, you're Scottish and British, or Welsh and British, or English and British. So I feel strongly that people are trying to deny me my Irishness. You know, I grew up being Irish. I grew up, even though I'm Protestant, you know, I never identified myself as anything else. And I also know that people here and people in Scotland and people in Wales and people in England, that's how they identify me, you know? No, no, no. I mean, really it is a couple of fuckle and that's why we need a nursery school. So the families that we have who are coming, you know, the parents are learning a couple of fuckle, the kids are learning a couple of fuckle, the kids pick it up probably quicker. But, you know, they're coming once a week to a class, they're learning a few wee rhymes, they're learning a few wee songs, they're, they're learning a few actions and, you know, things like that. And that's about it. And they'll maybe come back for a few years and, um, and then they're, they're not getting it in school, they're not getting it anywhere else. Now, some of them um, then go into the integrated sector and there is some Irish in the integrated sector. Some of them will come up into the adult class. So, you know, we, we, want, we want to see a nursery school, we want to see a bun school, because that's where we need to go. If we are going to actually make a difference and not play at it and have speakers, you know, that's what we need to get into the education. Well, well that's what we're hoping, and as I, say, as I said to you, we have four um, who are all Protestant, who came without a word of Irish four years ago and they are going off into the University of Ulster this September to do the diploma and some of them have children who and their their children have been learning Irish with us and you know we want to we want to be able to equip our own people to create our own teachers and you know for them to then come and they they love they've great loyalty to Taurus but the strength in us 
and give the language back. So, you know, it's, it's a work in progress, but we are where the niceness community was 40 years ago. And my goodness, now, you know, there's fantastic things going on there. There's 5,000 plus children <laughs> being educated through the medium of Irish. There's fluent young adults. There's, you know, people are writing dramas and poetry and songs and, you know, all sorts of fantastic things happening. So, you know, we have, we have a lot of catching up to do, but at least, you know, they, they had the trail and whole, you know, whole new trail they had to blaze where somebody's done it before us. We, we only have to follow in their footsteps. Yes, well, what we do is, I mean, we, we get people out and about. Uh, we have a singing class as well. So we have a rang around Iacta, so they, they learned through the singing. Um, we use a lot of sort of visual stuff. Um, we've used some drama. And, you know, so we've, we've a sort of ongoing thing looking at different creative ways of actually learning. Tr yeah, traditional, yeah. traditional Irish songs, some of them are from Ulster, yeah. Yeah, well, I was thinking if it's traditional, so you're in a couple of songs, then mm -hmm. they wouldn't have to go down. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, I've actually, I was over, I was in the Gale Talk for two weeks before I came here and we got our learners down, so I had a group down. So yeah, no, we would, we would go down and we've, we've, um, we've got good contacts there as well and we've had people giving us breaks. We're actually going down to Kerry and to the Gale Talk at the end of August. I was on the radio and um, a Catholic priest phoned me, heard me on the radio and said, Linda, we have this centre, it's a hostel, it's not great, but it's very basic, but we'll give you 16 places if you want to bring people down. And he was actually on the phone the other night and he's got a, a, lang a, a language expert, he's got a place names expert, they're coming to do music, you know, the, it's, it's so welcome and, you know, and I think that's one of the things that's been wonderful, it's been the warmth of people. You know, people have given us the centre's books have sent us recordings, have sent us speakers, you know, so many things because they are so keen to give the language to us. And that's, I suppose, what saddens me sometimes then when I speak to people, some people within my own community, you know, who, you know, who want to attack the other community. And, you know, and I just feel, you know, if you could only see the generosity that's been shown, Nobody's trying to compromise us. Nobody's saying to us, you can't be British, or you can't be Protestant, or you can't be this. Nobody's trying to take anything away from us. In fact, that's what one of my learners said. You know, he said, from when I started learning Irish, he says, I've lost nothing, but I've gained so much, so much. And, you know, one of the things I suppose that surprised me, um, I'm not a particularly political person, so it, it wasn't a big deal. Though that, and saying that there was, there was a part of me even though I come from a, you know, a very cross community family and my family aren't, um, you know, they're very politically left wing. But there was a part of me that did feel when I started learning Irish, am I doing something wrong? You know, am I, am I betraying something? Is there? And I had to get over and I call it a wee hump that people have. And then you got, you know, you get a grip on yourself and think, you know, no, I'm not, you know. But it's just you have to get in there and experience it. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, one of the, the first things, she's helped me by existing. She's helped me, and Adrian will tell you, I'm all over Twitter at the minute, and I'm all over Facebook at the minute, saying, look, here are these people, you know, they're not in the IRA, honestly, you know. And I've never been in, they're not ex-paramilitaries, no jail talk, you know. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe they all know, a few dodgy looking characters out there, you know. But just by being, by existing, by having the language, you know, that, that means, you know, and do the same in Scotland to say, look, you know, this doesn't take anything away from you. Look, there's bilingual signage, you know, they're, they're not being sold in the United Ireland because there's going to be bilingual, you know, so by being, just by being here and being vocal. And if you're on Twitter and any of you are on Facebook, you know, link in to me, Linda Irvine, it's Irvine with an E, come in and support me in my arguments and say, well, actually, I'm in the Isle of Man, I'm Manx, I speak Gaelic, I love the language, I'm, you know, I don't support the IRA. Do that, that, that would be fantastic, you know, that, that would be wonderful because they don't know people like you exist. That, that's the problem. 
They don't know people like you exist. So, you know, how can you help us by having a pride in your own language, by growing your own language, by speaking your own language? That's, that's how you help us in our, in our challenge.